Hello and welcome to another tutorial of JavaScript. Here we will be learning how to work with a while loop. First of all, let's understand what is a loop. A loop is basically a process which allows you to go in a repeated fashion over a portion of a code until certain condition is met. So you loop through or iteratively go through a process over and over and over again or a bunch of lines bunch of instructions until a certain condition is met. So it's extremely important to make sure that there is a condition that at some point in time there's a possibility of meeting. Because if you miss that, you will going to be end up, we will be go running into an infinite loop, which pr should be avoided um, in all situations, uh, not to create an infinite loop. Um, so we'll be creating a while loop here. Now the while loop or for loop or do while loop they are categorized into several different categories. As far as while loop is concerned, while loop is categorized as a pre-test loop or a precondition loop. What does that mean? Well, all loops have bodies just like if conditions. If the condition is placed before you enter the body of the loop, it's called a precondition loop. While loop that we will be creating over here will be a finite loop. That means it will going to have a terminating condition. Now, as far as the termination condition is concerned, the termination condition could be uh, account controlled. That means you will going to know exactly how many times the loop will going to execute. Or it could be an event control. That means you know the ending condition, but you do not know after how many times that ending condition will be met. Just to understand it, for example, if you um, create a system which will going to produce 500 units per day, so you know that it will going to run 500 cycles every day. So you know the number of cycles it will going to run in any particular day. However, on the other hand, you say, okay, start producing units from 8 in the morning till 5 p.m. in the evening. So you have given the ending condition as 5 p.m. So from 8 to 5, it will going to execute, but you do not know how many times it will going to execute, but you know for the fact it will going to stop at 5 p.m. That's an event control loop. So event control is driven by an event. You cannot tell the count. In the count control, you can tell how many times the loop will going to move. All loops should have a starting point. All loops should have an ending point, which is termed as the condition. And this condition can be event based or the count base. And all loops should have a process which tells how to go from start to end. So that's basically are the three components for any loop. Let's say if I would like to now create a problem statement, print first 10 natural numbers, which is 1 through 10. I know my starting point is 1, and I know my ending point is 10. And now I need to come up with some kind of a methodology that will take me from 1 all the way through 10. So I create a variable called, let's say, number, and I set it to a value of 1. So that's my starting point for the loop. Now I'm going to be going into the body of the loop which requires me to have a testing condition right at the beginning because it's a pretest loop while number is less than equals to 10. That means as long as the number is less than or it's equals to 10, the loop will going to keep running. As soon as the number becomes greater than 10, the loop will going to stop. Therefore, now I must write a process which is how I can take the number from 1 all the way through 10, but also make sure that I go through this process 10 times. And the only way to do that is to increment the value of num by 1. And as we have learned in the past, there are several different ways of doing it. You could do plus plus num, you could do num plus plus, you could do num plus equals to 1, or you could do num equals to num plus 1. All of these four ways could be used to increment the value of a counter by 1. Now, before I increment, what I would like to do is I would like to print the current value of num 
followed by a space so that I can print all 10 numbers in a line separated by a space. So now we're going to try to run this program run and here you can see it prints all the way 1 through 10 in the increments of 1. So my loop has a starting point, my loop has the end point, and my loop has a process of getting from start to an end. Similarly, in the same example, I would like to run another loop. I'll just change my problem statement. The new problem statement that I would like to throw out here is print first 10 natural numbers was my old problem. I would like to print print even numbers between 0 through 10 inclusive. Inclusive means 0 is the part of the deal. So 0 is my starting point. 10 is my end point. Why 0 is my starting point? Because 0 is the first even number and 10 is my end point. Now, even numbers are in a sequence of increments of 2, not increments of 1. So instead of doing num plus plus, all I need to do is num plus equals to 2. And now, if I am looking at my output, I will going to be seeing the result. But before I do that, let me throw in a new line so that the next output comes on a new line. And here I go, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Similarly, if I change this problem statement and say, OK, I would like to print odd numbers between 0 to 10. Now, the first odd number is not 0, but 1. So now, as I um, refresh this, you'll see 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. So looking at a problem statement, whenever you have to solve a problem with using a loop, you have to keep three things in mind. Starting point, ending point, and how to get there. Now if I would like to change the problem statement again, as a problem statement says, print first 10 natural numbers 1 through 10 in reverse order. So when it says reverse order, that pretty much means start from 10, come all the way down to 1. However, if I'm starting from 10 and coming down to 1, my condition will be keep looping while the number is greater than or equals to 1. Because if I say while number is less than or equals to 1, it will going to fail in the first iteration because 10 by no means is less than or equals to 1. Now, I will going to take care of my process, which is now I would have to decrement by 1 because I'm coming down in the reverse order. So as I run this loop, you can see it starts from 10, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and comes all the way down to 1. So it's extremely important that you look at the problem statement and then analyze it. So analysis of the problem statement in terms of loops is extremely important. Well, that's all from this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we're going to explore the do-while loop. Thank you for watching.